Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose and today we are going to be talking all about Google Forms. With a lot of us going back to school and having to do everything virtually, I thought it would be a really good idea to show you guys the two main ways that I like to use Google Forms. The first way is for student surveys, whether it be student feedback or whether it be a survey about a specific topic. And then the second way is going to be an attendance form. I've spoken about this before in my previous videos, but I wanted to just sit down and show you step by step how exactly I create this form for attendance. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to my channel. Let's get into today's video. Two ways that I use Google Forms for my classroom. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up Google Forms. What I love to do is start with writing the title. So this title for this specific survey is called Media Survey. If you click the left uh, top corner, that will change the title automatically. And the description, I pretty much just will usually write instructions or here I just wrote, how much do you really know about our world? Now here, you can see all of the different options for how students can respond. Short answer, paragraph form, multiple choice, check boxes, drop down. Here I chose linear because I wanted it to be on a scale from one to 10. So I'm writing on a scale from one to 10. How do you rate your level of awareness and I was like, uh, what do I write here? <laughs> of current events. So I just changed it, make sure that it was from one to 10. And then I just labeled each one, one so that the students know that they have no real understanding or they're not really aware. And then 10 being that they are fully aware. And you can make this about anything. You can make this so related to your content where you can say things like, how familiar are you with PEMDAS? Or how familiar are you with the scientific revolution? So now the next question is going to be um, a different format, but again, still in survey form. So I started with, which sources do you currently use for information about what is happening in our country. So I thought that this was really important to know how exactly are my students consuming media. And so for this specific one, I'm going to check boxes and I'm just going to write a few. There are so many, uh, this list could have continued forever, but I'm just writing the ones that were the most obvious um, and that I thought students would be able to check off. So newspapers, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and then lastly, TV, oh, and radio I added as well. So these are the things that they can check off. The next one is going to be a different format as well. So for this one, I'm going to click multiple choice. So I wanted you guys to see that you can do so many different versions of the questions that you're asking your students even within that one survey. In your opinion, paying attention to the events that are happening in our country is, and then I'm just going to write three different statements here uh, to know more or less where they stand about finding out what is happening. So now we're gonna drop down to another one and I'm also going to use this as a checkbox option. Which of the following events do you see media coverage of over the summer? And again, I'm gonna write a few things here. Of course, this list can be maybe 
30 items long. I'm just choosing a few that I thought of from the top of my head. And so all of these things, again, the list can be so, so long. And then the last thing is I ask them to write their first and last name. The reason why I ask students to write their first and last name, I know oftentimes for surveys, we would want them to be anonymous. And depending on the type of survey, you may want it to be. But the reason why I wanted them to write their first and last name, I find it extremely helpful as the teacher to know each student's response, which are my students that are well-informed and are very well-rounded with what's happening in the world. That would help me when it comes to grouping students, when it comes to assigning or creating specific assignments. And who are the students that are like, I have absolutely no idea what is happening. For me, that's important when it comes to planning for future lessons and so for something like this i would not make it anonymous and i would want them to write their name but for you you may have something specific that it doesn't really matter and you may just want to see a percentage oh how many students more or less feel this way how many students feel that way but for me personally i would like to see each student's individual response Also, I make sure that all of these things are required. So make sure you hit the required button. And then the next thing I want to show you is what I would do with the settings. So again, if you clicked collect email addresses, the students would have to write their email address in. But if you're submitting this, um, if you're asking them to write their name, then that would already be in there. When it comes to presentation or would you wanna make this a quiz, no, because it's a survey, but it can easily be turned into a quiz. Um, but then they, there would have to be right and wrong answers. So again, this is why it's a survey and not a quiz. When it comes to uh, having a co-teacher, on the bottom there, it says add collaborators. I always add that. Um, I always add my co-teacher on to the collaborator or maybe you have um, someone over you in your department that wants to see the things that you're creating. So definitely do that as well. And then for responses, when students fill out the responses, you will actually see a bar graph populate, which we don't see here, but that would happen. And then also what I love is that everything is time stamped. So you get to see when students filled out the survey, what each of their answers were, and then of course their first and last name. So this information is extremely helpful. So now that I've showed you guys how I like to create surveys, and again, this can be anything, I also am going to use a survey like this for the first week of school where I ask them questions about themselves, what do they prefer, uh, more of like a get to know you in the form of a survey. So it was that easy to create a survey using Google Forms. And now we're going to get into the attendance tracker, which is even easier. And it's going to be so, so helpful if you're trying to figure out ways to make sure that you're marking attendance. It's all on the responsibility of the students. All you have to do is create the form. So let's get into it. Same thing, I'm going to go into opening Google Forms and I am going to title this one a little differently, whatever you prefer, but again, I'm just writing attendance, period one, and then also my name. Now, you may want to write the title of your class, which is totally fine, but I prefer my name. And then here, again, a very quick description. Please fill out this form daily to mark your attendance. Very simple, 
please write your first name here and this is going to be short answer and just make sure that you click required so that it forces students to write that information in. And then when you duplicate, I'm just going to change it so that it says your last name here. Again, it's already required. And then when I duplicate, I told you guys that my school has also asked that we do like a quick little multiple choice section. So they're just going to check the multiple choice box that says I'm here to mark their attendance and they are good to go. It is so simple to create this. Again, check below to mark your period one government attendance just so that they are reminded that this is the class that you are marking your attendance for. And that is the form, so, so simple. You as the educator may want more information, but for me, first and last name, that's really all I need and that they know that they're marking it for that specific period of the day. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is that you can just change the theme you know, makes it a little cuter. You can just worry about the background color or you can go into themes and you can see that Google provides you with so many different cute theme uh, backgrounds. You can also upload your own image. Maybe your school has a logo that you wanna use instead. Totally up to you. Um, and so I'm just going to pick something quickly for the purpose of this video. But again, you can choose anything. It's just nice to know that these forms can be a little personalized and can be a little cuter than just the standard Google form. So this is what my attendance sheet looks like. You can change the borders as well. And it's that simple, you guys. That's all you need to do if you wanna track attendance. And this is something that you can share daily on a Google Classroom with your students, or it's something that you can send to them in their emails daily, which sounds like a mess, but for sure, for sure, make sure that you add collaborators if you have co-teachers, and then definitely just take the link and share it on your Google Classroom. The responses, the same way that it populated for the survey, it will do the same thing also for the attendance. And so I'll just show you guys that really quickly. And for me, what's most important here is the timestamp for attendance. You know exactly when students filled out the form. It can get a little tricky, um, complicated if your school is allowing students to fill out the form maybe within an hour block, but definitely keep track of that. The last thing I'm showing you here is that you can share the same form with your students every day for attendance, but it starts to get confusing. So what I do is I like to highlight the background after each day so that I know exactly which day I mark the attendance. After a week, it will feel very jumbled. So if you're just taking the time to highlight after each day, highlight the background, then you get to see the new set of students who filled out attendance for that day. And it's just a lot easier to keep track of that information. So these are the two ways that I love to use Google Forms. Of course, there are so many other ways, but these are the two most basic ways and also the ways that I use the most often. We'll see as remote teaching continues, that may change, but for right now, these are super standard for me. So I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, follow me on Instagram. I will leave my name here and it's also in the description bar. And I will see you guys in the next video.